want to greet everybody this morning as you're getting online. Um, you're welcome to uh, join with us. At, make sure you post your comments and your prayer request and your greetings to each other. Uh, that way we can have a, a way of getting to con staying connected with each other, even if we are at distance. And then we have a few folks in here in the congregation. They can also know what's going on in your life so they can be praying for you as well. So if you'd like to participate with us in communion, go ahead and get your communion items together. You're welcome to get whatever you have in your cabinets, whether it's a cracker or cookie, whether it's juice, milk, uh, whatever, a piece of bread in, uh, and, and water, whatever you have to celebrate uh, the body and blood of our Lord as we celebrate communion together. Again, we'll start at the top of the hour as you go ahead and post in. Please go ahead and stay connected with us. Uh, get your hearts in right with as we give glory to God in a few moments. Good morning. I want to welcome you as you join us here at Trinity Metropolitan Community Church. Uh, we have folks here in the congregation as well as on, online and those that may be watching us later. We're so thankful that you're here with us and pray that you continue to give God glory. We're going to have a call to worship and ask Tamara to lead that with us and then a prayer afterwards.
call to worship. Good morning. God of love. When we feel that we have lost direction as a people or even as a person, help us remember your presence in our wilderness journeys. The day of the Lord is coming. Our God, our God is down to steadfast, steadfast love. love. Great deliverer, your steadfast love and wonderful works have spoken spared us of troubles known and unknown for you are in love with us the day of the lord is coming our god abounds in steadfast love holy spirit help us remember the great work that christ accomplished for us which no other person could perform help us confess with gladness by grace we have been saved. The day of the Lord is coming. Our, Our God, God abounds in steadfast love. love. Lord Jesus Christ, gift of mercy from God above, you love us even when we are most unlovable, lost, and afraid. Thank you for your grace. The day of the Lord is coming. Our, Our God, God abounds in steadfast love. love. God of wonders and miracles, God of rivers and streams, God of heaven and earth, take us and make us holy. Today we come into the space with the hope to receive the living water which flows from grace, wash us and make us clean. God, we are weary at times in this land of the living. Be our strength and guide for God, you are forever giving. You are the bread of life. You are now with us. Because we seek you now, we know that you are enough. Satisfy our desire for truth. Let us soak in your amazing grace. God, we need you now. Come now and fill this space. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank amen. you, Lord.
Thank you. You may be seated. In our prayer request today, I want to remember Rob Peacock. He asked us to have a, a personal a prayer request for him. Also, I remember Zay also for a personal prayer request. Uh, Cherie had a lump removed last week, and I uh, just pray that the results from that are good. Dwayne uh, had a skill saw accident and uh, lost a couple of his, one of his fingers and may lose the second, so we want to continue to pray for Dwayne's healing on his hand. Uh, Danny, you've got a procedure coming up, is that correct? No, I've already had it, success. Oh, it's success. Oh, awesome. So good, good deal. Praise for Danny then to that success. I uh, also want to remember Rob and uh, his cataracts that are getting harder to see. Uh, a friend of mine named Mark, I'd like to also remember him for a personal private prayer request. Uh, uh, many people have had lost loved ones in these past uh, several weeks. We want to continue to lift up them, uh, even though uh, you know it, it seems like the world's moved on. We are still we have uh, grieving in our hearts. I want to continue to remember. Um, Sandra and Gail, uh, they're continuing to improve, and also Gail's mom is improving, so that's a, a wonderful thing from the, the bat of uh, 
bout of COVID, excuse me. Um, any other prayer requests that we have here from you in the audience are those that may be online. Yes. Oh, yes. Hand, uh, she's uh, in hospital and also pregnant. So praying for Tamara's uh, daughter. Uh, also, I saw online uh, a praise report. Terry praised the report that he got his first COVID shot. Uh, and so uh, he's excited about that and, and moving toward getting, uh, getting the vaccination for that. Any others that we have that are maybe Travel mercies. We're going to Arkansas next weekend. So uh, just so we get there safe and back. Okay. My, that I'm getting my COVID shot on Thursday. Okay, good. So Mike and Tony are, are traveling, and they'll be traveling to Arkansas and back uh, for a quick run up there. So pray for them and, and safety in that. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. You are a wonderful God. We thank you, God, as we've already sang praises, as we've already given you glory in our, in our call to worship and in our, our, in our very hearts, God, as we focused on you today. But God, we know also there are many that are still struggling, many that are facing some difficult situations and, and, uh, and, de and decisions ahead for themselves. God, we pray that you um, bless and heal as you see fit. God, as your will to touch each and every one of these hearts and lives, to remind them, God, that you are the, uh, the ultimate power in our universe and yet still loving and still caring for each of us. We thank you for that, God. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
Thank you, praise team. Appreciate your sharing that with us today. I was looking at the camera angle uh, that we have just now, on them, and it looks like we have them in a little cage, like the little zoo animals singing for us. So they're not in a cage, they're just behind plexiglass as they're singing so that uh, the voices, uh, or when they're singing out, the germs and things like that won't spread to others, and then put their mask on when they're seated. So <laughs> they're not in cages, but I thought that was uh, kind of interesting. But really do appreciate your dedication and your uh, support for us today. I heard about a family that uh, their fourth grader was celebrating his birthday and he was on crutches and so he couldn't really carry his birthday cupcakes into his class and into school. And so the family asked the daughter, who was a sixth grader, if she'd help her brother carry uh, the cupcakes inside. And she said, well, I could, but I'd prefer not to. And so spotting a teaching moment, the dad says, well, what would Jesus do? And she answered, well, Jesus was healing so he could carry his own cupcakes. Psalms 107, our reading today, is only a small sampling of the overall uh, passage of Psalms 107. And we're carving out three little verses at the beginning of it, and then about a half a dozen from the center of this larger poem. If you read the entire Psalms, and what I encourage you to do, it's just 43 verses, it's not really all that long, you'll discover it is a curious historical re uh, retrospective, if you will, of various experiences and, and various, uh, various unnamed people that they had with their relationship with God. Now, throughout the Psalm, the, the upshot of those first few voices is one theme. God delivers people from distress. Amen. Since this time last year, I, I, I don't know a person with an earshot of me or online remotely that hasn't experienced some sort of their share of distress. We've all experienced some sort of distress, some milder than others, some deeper than others, but we've all experienced some distress. And to know that God delivers from distress, amen. Well, this larger poem runs through a checklist of these different groups and, and how they got into their distress and from which they eventually needed their rescue and deliverance from. It says that some wandered in the desert wastelands and they got their relief and deliverance. Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, and that might have been in their souls or in the spiritual darkness that they were in. It says some became fools through their rebellious ways, and they needed deliverance. Some went out on ships into the sea, and they needed deliverance from whatever the wilds offer them on um, um, points beyond what they understood. And of course, in no case in this psalm do we receive any real clue of who this some are, which I believe is good news. I, it's good news for us anyway, because it could include us all of us, that we are all the sum that have deliver, need deliverance and that God will be delivering. And even if at times it seems that may, God was the sender of the distress in the first place, like someone being, needing a correction or punishment from their sin, nevertheless, God receives all the praise for the deliverance that will eventually come. Our theme this uh, season of Lent is rend your hearts. Rend your hearts in repentance. Call out for forgiveness. Claim the promises. And, and God has many covenants and many promises that we can claim because we are children of God. And then today, we are to look up to God. Look up and live. Don't let the cares of this world distract you to get you down, to keep you from looking up to God. Because God is the one that offers abundant life. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I came so they would have life and have it more abundantly. Some translations call it fullness. The Amplified Version calls it to the full till it overflows. Amen. A life so wonderful that it's overflowing with abundance. Now this Psalms was likely a, a communal hymn for praise. Can you imagine the huge congregation of people in the, in the temple, uh, some temple festival, if you will, giving praise to God, singing to God's glory? My first time at Trinity MCC, it was a number of years ago, but I remember it was my first time seeing 
a group of LGBTQI identified people along with straight people being real about giving praise to God and for giving praise for God's love. You see, I'd heard I was an abomination. I was destined to hell because I love somebody of the same gender. But they were giving praise to the one who had died so that no one would be separated from God in hell. Amen? Others were told that they were enemies of God. Yet these were a group of people declaring that Jesus said that we should have love for our enemies. And don't you think that God heard that message too? God could love those who were declared to be enemies of God. Others heard that they were sick and perverted. Yet here was a group of people praising God who would declare them fearfully and wonderfully made, made in the image of the Almighty. Others were made to feel like they were just too far from God. God had turned their back on them. Yet these were a people who upheld that Jesus said that God would leave the 99 sheep to find that one lost sheep. That as far as the east is from the west, that our sins would be forgiven and dismissed. I heard that my sins, my mistakes, my brokenness had separated me from God. And there was a deep, cavernous chasm that would keep me from this sin-hating, holy, righteous God. Yet 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, God is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And others were told that if they didn't look the same or they weren't the same as everybody else, that they weren't wearing their Brooks Brothers tie and their Tommy Hilfiger shirt, that, that, that they didn't belong. And yet the Bible declares that there is neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free, nor rich nor poor, nor male nor female, because all of us are one in Christ. I was told my attraction for same gender, if, if I acted on it, would be a sin that would cause me to completely lose my salvation. Yet here was a group of people, faithful people, remembering the words of Jesus when he said in John 10, I give them eternal life and they will not perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand for my creator God has given them to me and God is more powerful than everyone else and no one can snatch them out of God's hand. It's like we're doubly blessed in Christ's hand and in God's hand, and no one can snatch us out. Or the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell, not even the churches that say I don't belong, can separate us from God's love. Hallelujah. Our psalm today starts with, Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's love endures forever. We sing a little song, a little chorus like that. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's love endures forever. You know the song. Our translation today used uh, faithful as the adjective for love. Now, some other translations and our call to worship also today use the word steadfast love. All of these are referencing to a Hebrew word called hesed, H E S E D. One commentator, a commentator uh, considered the, a good and faithful working of de- definition of the Hebrew word hesed means the consistent, the ever faithful, the relentless, constantly pursuing, lavish, extravagant, unrestrained, furious love of our holy parent God. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, those who have not made up their mind yet, I'm going to repeat that definition and give our soul one more chance to celebrate God's love as defined by this word, this Hebrew word, hesed, the consistent, ever faithful, relentless, constantly pursuing, lavish, extravagant, unrestrained, furious love of our holy parent, God. 
Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Does that resonate in your soul? Glory to our loving God. Verse 3 continues and says, For Yahweh had gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, from north and south. These words had a very poignant meaning to the people of Jerusalem at that time, especially the post-exile period that they were part of. After 50 years of a captivity in Babylon, they indeed were now being gathered in by God to their ancestral home. Gathered, as Jesus said, like a, a mother hen would gather their chicks. They were being gathered back together. I know what it's been like to feel exiled. Exiled from God, exiled from religious people. You may have felt your distance from God. And yet God is gathering from the east and the west, from the north and the south, here to Trinity, here to other churches like us where everyone is welcome. I remember my first time at an MCC general conference. It was right in Dallas at that time. And there was about five to 6,000 people from all the churches all around our world gathered there. In fact, sitting right next to me was a pastor from a church in Germany, an MCC church in Germany. And on the other side of me was one, a lay leader from Canada. And in front of me was a guy named Richard, a, a lay leader from Good Hope MCC in South Africa. And he and I are still friends. I made friends with people from Panama and Brazil and the Philippines and Uruguay and Australia. Imagine an MCC church on every inhabited continent. Now, that doesn't include Antarctica because uh, it's not officially inhabited. There's just lots of people there doing scientific work. And then, you know, we, I've had my opportunity to go to Canada and, and to help and do some things with our churches in Canada. And just recently this week, and I put, put it on our Facebook, I put it out on the 12th, if you go to our Facebook page, you can see Cuba's successful campaign to refute the negative rhetoric that the conservative churches were having there. And the, their campaign motto is, Cristo ama mis colores, meaning Christ loves our colors. Amen. Both this was a pro-diversity for the LGBTQ community, but also pro-diversity in regards to race. And don't we know there's another country sort of like that that needs to hear that too? Right here in America, Christ loves our colors. Gathering all the exiled from every corner of the world. You see, I, I grew up in a large denomination, and I never imagined that I would have direct connections to people from other countries. There was a remoteness, if you will, about it. We, we would give uh, on large missionary offering campaigns, maybe have a special time of prayer for our missionaries and the people they were serving. But we never really thought about reaching out and going ourselves. It was always easier just to write a check and send it on. Now is the time, the psalmist says, that it is time to give praise to God for all those that are in distress. Verses 17 of this passage we just read said, Some were fools, they rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food and they were knocking at death's door. I know some of us have been knocking at death's door. I, I see Troy over here. I don't mean to call you out, Troy, but we were just talking about he just finished his um, chemo uh, in December and hasn't even heard from the doctor in a while. Like the doctor's not even worried about him anymore. Amen. Troy's certainly not worried. The Lord has him. And even if the Lord doesn't heal him here on earth, the Lord's going to heal him in heaven. Amen. Amen. Lord, help. Verse 19, they cried out in their trouble, and God saved them from, from their distress. You see, Psalms 107 is basically an ode of salvation for all people who cry out to the Lord God in their distresses. Whatever that distress might be, whatever the source of the distress may be, whatever time of their life it might be, your struggles, the distress, you're, you feeling lost and, and abandoned, this is the passage for you. This is a psalm that you could claim. 
Another passage I shared this week, someone shared with me, and I, I thought, man, this resonated with my heart. I was going through some things, and this passage really meant to me is 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11. I, I want you to write that down if you want to look at it later. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 10 through 11, it says, In loving kindness, God called you to share in God's eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you've suffered a little while, God will restore, support, and strengthen you. And God will place you on a firm foundation. All power to God Almighty forever and ever. Amen. That's 1 Peter 5, 10 to 11. Now our reading this morning ends with this little nugget. Verse 20. Yahweh gave the command and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. God is the one who spoke power to our rescue, to your healing to your deliverance, to your provisions, your hope in a hopeless time. God, the very one through Christ Jesus, spoke the world into existence. The psalmist says, gave the command to heal, deliver, provide for, and to snatch believers from the door of death. And now what is our response to God's has said, the Hebrew word has said love? Our response to that consistent, ever faithful, relentless, const, uh, constantly pursuing, lavish, extravagant, unrestrained, furious love of our holy parent God. What is supposed to be our response to that? The psalmist continues and says in verse 21, Let them praise the Lord for God's great love and for the wonderful things that God has done for them. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about God's glorious acts. Amen. Basically, we're called to worship, folks, to give praise, to offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, to sing for joy. The Apostle Paul said, um, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because because of all that God has done for you. This is in Romans chapter 8. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that God would find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship our God. Simply put, our lives should be our worship, our service to God and for God. Not just a few moments here at church or a few moments watching a little bit online worship services here and there. We're supposed to be living out our worship every day. It also called us to sacrifices of thanksgiving. Our giving. I my my home church uh, was hiring a new pastor at one time, and and uh, uh, the the deacon board and, the, and those in leadership were telling the pastor that they were considering hiring. Said, "Look, you know, pastor, uh, our church has we got to be honest with you. We've got a serious money problem." And the pastor said, "No, you don't have a serious money problem. You have a serious God problem." He continued and said, when you focus on God, then God will get the glory. But when you focus on your money or lack of, God doesn't get the glory. We have called to be faithful, folks. Faithful in our thanksgiving. For God that is doing and going to do what God is doing in the ministry in this church and what God's done for you in the ministry of the church and what God's going to be doing for others and generations beyond us. We're called to give. If you're not being blessed, if God's not getting glory, if God's love isn't being declared, then you shouldn't support any ministry that doesn't do those things. But if it is a blessing, and if God is getting glory, and God's love is being faithfully shared, then you need to be faithful to God and give faithfully, cheerfully, and sacrificially so that ministry will abound. It also calls us to sing praises, to sing for joy. Recently, I heard a music minister say, The Lord has given you a voice to sing praises to God. It is now time to offer it to God. And if you sing well, then that's amazing. But if you can't sing very well, then it's time to get even with God. So make that joyful noise. (laughs) Amen? Amen. Folks, we need to worship God. Both privately in our own hearts and in our own homes, but also corporately with others. 
Now, I encourage you to be in person as, as soon as you feel safe. We, we are trying to keep everybody safe here, but also online. But to be active about it. The, the problem is I believe many people are just too passive in their, in their worship. And they can easily sit in a pew and not participate or, or just give a little bit or, or mouth a few words and then leave and nothing's changed. Or they can watch online while they're busy doing some other things with all their distractions going on and watch a few worship services here and there. But if we really have a devotion for God, if God's love is real to you, then we should be real back to God in our devotion and love back to God. Now, though this isn't in part of our reading that we read today, the final verse of Psalms 107 is verse 43, and I want to share it with you. It says, Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. And you see, there's that, that Hebrew word again, hesed, H-E-S-E-D, for the word faithful. Let the one who is wise heed these things or ponder loving deeds, other translations saying. This, this pondering, pondering that Hebrew hesed word that we used again, that consistent, ever faithful, relentless, constantly pursuing, lavish, extravagant, unrestrained, furious love of our holy, loving God. And we're to heed these things. We're to ponder God's hesed loving deeds. We're to rend our hearts in repentance and confession. We're to claim those promises that God will deliver. And we're to look up and live because God is the one that will send that. That's not bad for Lent, is it? I want to give you the opportunity. We often do just read a confession and share a confession with each other. But I want to give you an opportunity to... to in, invite you, if you will, to respond in some way to today's sermon. You can respond in reconciliation and restoration or renewal. It may be that you need to, to ask for more help. You may need some prayer and you might need to reach out to me and you can private message me, if you will, or you can do it here online. Maybe you just need some prayer. Prayer for your renewal and the joy of your salvation. Maybe you need some help in, in, in making a co you know, confession of repentance and being made right with God. Maybe you're praying in your distress, and you're looking for God for deliverance, and this is the time that you need that. Maybe you need a healer, and maybe you need to be used of God to bring healing to someone else, to forgive and love someone else, because God first loved you. And forgives you in Christ. And maybe you need to forgive someone else. This, this is that opportunity to you respond. If, if you want to be faithful in the online comments, you can say what God's calling you to do and, and confess it right then. If you want to come forward in a time of prayer, I'm happy to do that. And if nothing else, just use these moments to reflect upon God's lavish love in your life.
I know it's a little hard to come boldly forward when there's a camera on and, and other things and, and other, other people are watching. Maybe it's bold for you to get online and to declare these things. But Jesus said, if you deny me before this wicked generation, then God will deny you. So don't let that happen. Give praise to God. Let, let others know that you give praise to God and what the distress God has delivered you from and what God's calling you to. All right, let's pray. God, I thank you for this, this time of your word and, your, and sharing in this time. God, I pray that those hearts that are touched, God, may you convict them to do the right thing, to step forward and to do what you've called them to do in faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. I stepped away. Um, I was thinking what else was I going to do. Uh, this is the time. And you're, if you're giving, you can go to our trinitymcc.org uh, forward slash giving. And you can go to our giving page or go to our normal web page and drop down to the, to the button for giving. Uh, that way you can give regularly. You can also give when you're here in the congregation or drop by. We have a little mail slot. People have dropped it in or mail in a check um, as you feel comfortable, uh, knowing that you continue to support this ministry and how it's benefited you and how it's going to benefit so many others. So continue to do that, and we thank you for that. And now as we get ready for uh, communion, if you've got your elements together, do that. As, you're, as I'm preparing, you can get your uh, items together to rec represent Christ's body and blood. As we share together. Don't let the fact that you don't have some, some grape juice or wine or a communion wafer to do this. This is you're welcome to use whatever you want because God's getting the glory. We've had the opportunity to hear God's word, to take some time up from reflection and, and, and invitation to, uh, to respond to God's word. In the name of God, our creator, and Christ the child, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter guide, I offer you God's forgiveness. Go and forgive and love likewise. On the night that Christ was betrayed, he had gathered the disciples together. They were sharing in this meal. And he took a piece of bread and he blessed it. And God, we thank you for this. And he said, this is my body. My body, which is given for you. And then he broke it and he passed it among them and said, take and eat. And then he took a cup of wine, fruit of the vine. And he said, this is my blood. My blood that is freely poured out for you. My blood that is a new covenant. And whenever you eat this bread and drink this wine, remember me. Holy God, we ask that you bless each person today as we're faithfully using whatever elements that we have in front of us, juice, water, soda, milk, crackers, cookies, wafers, piece of bread. Because, God, we know it's not the elements that matter. It's Christ's body and blood that mattered. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Let's repeat the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is here. Christ shall come again. Brothers and sisters, we have what we call an open communion in MCC churches, meaning everyone is welcome. No one is denied. And obviously you're online and you say, well, I, I, you know, I don't have to participate. Or You're all welcome. No one's stopping you. This is God's glory that we're giving. And we're remembering Christ just as he asked us to do. So take and eat as we are. So we take the bread and we thank you and we eat the precious body of our Lord. And the cup and we drink the blood of our Lord.
God, I thank you for each person who is able to participate in this today. God, we thank you especially for Christ as he gave of himself so that we could each be children of God, so that we could be made right with you, O God, because your love knows no bounds. In Jesus' holy name, amen. For our announcements, we want to uh, let you know something exciting we're excited about. Our Easter Sunday service, we'll be doing a parking lot worship service. We know that still many people are feeling uncomfortable coming into larger gatherings. And um, even if you are wearing your mask, even if some folks have had their, their vaccinations, we still want to make sure that everybody's a part of our Easter service and celebration. So we're going to be doing it outside, even if, if weather permits. Now, if it's raining, then we'll go ahead and meet inside. We're not going to force everybody to sit out there drenched. Uh, but uh, if weather permits, then we're going to have a great, wonderful time. Uh, if, you are, if you are coming inside, we're still wearing masks when we're not uh, up at the pulpit area. Um, we're still using hand sanitizers. Uh, we're still doing several other protocols to keep you protected and, and socially distancing of the chairs and things like that. So we want you to know that you're still safe uh, as, as, you can, as we possibly be uh, to look for each other. Uh, but look forward to this Easter Sunday. That's going to be March, I mean, April 4th, excuse me, uh, April 4th. And uh, go ahead and invite friends and let people know that they can be a part of that. We'll still be doing the online version as well. So if you can't make it at all, uh, you're welcome to do that and, and, and watch online and participate. All right, let's give a final song and praise to God. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Thank you as we come together to close of one more time of worshiping you, God, giving you all praise and glory because you are the one that delivers us. It's because of your love, your steadfast, your faithful, your unrelenting love, your lavish love, God, that you look after us. We thank you for that, God. In Jesus' holy name, amen.